know, that's, I think, not a problem, but some of the commercial stuff's like straight in with like mid-range wobble. It's just like, rah, tear your face off kind of stuff, which is cool. But I think, you know, I, I like to kind of play a lot of the more chilled out sort of stuff, especially in submotion. True Tiger's probably, actually, that's pretty heavy. But um, yeah, so a lot of them is delayed. So I basically just started looping a load of stuff up then. And then over the top, basically, um, yeah, hang on, if I can get that back up. So it's just like an E minor kind of. And then just reverse, basically, that's the whole, that's the only thing it was done to it. As in making a kind of drone for yourself, basically. So, that's the good thing about the line six gears, like an inbuilt looper, basically. Um, and then the next thing you want to add, basically, for a main drop is the kind of sub and the main melody line to drop in. Now, for instance, this, I've got one. It's a synth the mic, I think. It's like detuning the two oscillators. It's kind of like a ring modulator, but it's also going through the echo, so you get the ring modulator echoing as well. I've also signed an expression pedal to, I think it's a full octave. So you've got a full octave jump there as well. So basically, uh, uh, drummer's getting really bored here. Will you give me a chance to show your paradiddles off in a minute, mate? <laughs> basically, there's a yeah, full octave sweep, basically. And then also, I've got my pedals aligned, so we've got the full octave sweep, which is also assigned to the mix of um, the mix of the echo as well. And the next pedal is the Mooga Fuga, which creates an LFO. So when I put them both up, it will send both the um, mix. Oh, uh, it'll send both the mix of the um, the looped part into the Mooga Fuga as well. So you can just taking it through a pattern basically. And then when your other parts in as well, chuck up the octave. You got. And the good thing is when you take it down the octave, that um, the, when because it's going through the echo as well, that slight push echoes as well, which is why you get that massive pull basically as well at the same time. So yeah, that's basically it really for that sort of thing. But then also, which is one of the crucial parts, is that the sub underlines everything of dubstep. So there's like a sub. We see everything rolled off basically. You're talking like 80 hertz, which is what I was saying about the sandwich of everything, 80 hertz. And in terms of a sound system, you've got 80 hertz for the sub, bass drum kicks through about 100, you know, so it's like this little sandwich where you layer up the parts of everything cuts through properly. So everything's underpinned with that basically. That's like your room shaker. Just make sure none of the lights come out. So yeah, basically that underpins everything. And then you've got, so you've got that other part on the top, basically. Which is where the dubstep kind of part of the production value of it comes in basically to playing it live. So it's like two separate parts basically. So you've got your sub and then you've got your oscillation over the top basically, which you can control with your feet alongside the octave sweep as well. The thing is a dubstep, I find that Harmonically, there's not much to it. It tends to, you know, just move. The most it would go would be like a dub setting where you'd have three chords or whatever, if that. So you've got to create variation within your lines, like in the way that you play. So the rate of your LFOs, the sounds, how they open up, and try and get as much variation in them, basically, which is a good kind of technique of creating parts. Is it's a bit of a weird way. It's not creating lines. You could probably write a more interesting bass line within the genre style just on one note and you would get more, you know, a drop, as it were, it's more about the build-up, so that when that whole drop comes and the sub drops in, you know, that's the part that kind of, you know, if you're just gonna like jump in, it's the bit that kind of, if you're gonna do like a drop, as if like a big heavy drop now. <laughs> Yeah, basically aiming for like that, like that smack in the face, basically. So everything else is like this build up to it so that when the drop comes, your sub comes in, 
your oscillations are in place and you create the lines around the variation. I mean, that was, I can't remember either D or G, I was just playing one note in an octave. A lot, some of it's dissonance as well, you can get, you know, like, Like slight change in thing where it's just like pop and all of a sudden there's something new basically that's what kind of makes it more exciting in a club atmosphere I think anyway you know personally for yeah that main drop <laughs>